Hey everyone, it's Lisa, and today I want to make a video for those of you that maybe have stumbled across me when you were looking up the carnivore diet and you don't know exactly why I started. Those of you that have been with me the whole time, you know, you know every single thing I've been through. But I wanted to make a video just to have as reference why I started and what my situation was and then how I feel about it. Okay, so when I started Carnivore, it was the Tuesday after Memorial Day, because of course I had to blow out the weekend, and I was 49 years old. I will be 52 on Thursday, day after tomorrow, September 1st. So I have been on Carnivore now for over two years, and I'm thriving. I love it. It's the best decision I've ever made. I'm not going to go into all of the miracles it has performed in my life because we'll do that in another video. I mainly want to key in on why I started this because it was not really to lose weight. Losing weight was, it was kind of like a symptom or gaining weight was a symptom of the two major issues I had at hand. I really think that they kind of even go together. One was my age and menopause. Two was gut issues and IBS. So both of these for the past, I mean, since I was probably 45 or six, have just wreaked havoc on my life. And it happens a little bit at a time. First, you will notice that you're putting on weight and the things that you have always done are not working. Like for instance, I have always known that eating low carb was a good way to lose weight. I did that with both of my pregnancy weight or losing weight after pregnancy and having my babies and it worked just beautifully. So I knew how to lose weight. What'll happen is you'll start doing those things and it just doesn't work and it starts getting very frustrating. But then you will just say to yourself, well, you know, I'm getting older. I'm going to have to just live with it. I'm going to maybe tweak my style a little bit. I'm going to have to find some things that hide my tummy. I'm going to have to maybe not wear as high of a heels. I'm going to have to just modify my life and my style to accommodate the, the changes that are happening in my life. So that is what I started doing. And that is kind of depressing for someone like me who has always found so much joy in getting dressed, getting wearing what I want to, wearing what I find attractive. And I don't know, I feel like it really took the fun out of it. It really just made getting dressed instead of being a fun thing to do and something to look forward to, it was almost like a challenge. It was a challenge. How could I wear this and my stomach not show? Because I had major bloating, major bloating and major swelling during this time. And it did progressively get worse as I neared towards 49. Now, I knew that my mom went through menopause completely at 45 and the doctor said that is a good indicator so when these things started happening it was just it was like a, a lot of things at once it was the night sweats it was the not going to sleep just all the classic menopause signs plus a few added in there like joint pain and just losing my balance i fell a couple of times that really freaked me out Okay, all of these will mess with your mind too. Not only, you know, losing yourself in this way will kind of mess with your mind, but menopause, it is hormonal and it does cause like PMS type symptoms. Then I've always had a sensitive stomach, but never to the point where it ruled my life, never to the point where I felt like I couldn't go out to eat or I felt like I couldn't eat certain things. When I was younger, what would happen is I would, if I got upset or if something like freaked me out or something, then I might get, you know, an upset stomach. But it was never like, made. it never stopped me from doing anything. Well, that progressively got worse too. 
And at that time, I just was like, what the heck is going on? You know, it was just like I was falling apart. And when you do YouTube videos, you really, it's very hard on your psyche and it's hard on your self-image because I see myself in so many angles. I see like when I get up and go to get something and then get back down, I see every, you know, you just see every single part of your body, especially in fashion videos. When you're getting undressed and dressed back up, boy, it will break you down for sure. All of this was just taking such a toll on my life. It was it was really because women, as women, we need to feel good. We need it. We need to feel good in order to do our jobs. We need to feel good in order to nurture. We need to feel good in order to be who we want to be. That's just part of who we are. Then when you put in the gut-brain connection, which I was not even aware of, it definitely makes sense why I was just so depressed. Depressed, and you hate to even admit that, especially when you've got a good life. You've got all these things to be thankful for, you're lucky you are getting older. You're lucky you're here. You know, you think, oh, well, I'm just going to need to get over it, get over it, suck it up, get over it. Well, as the years went on from about 45, 46 to 49, things got worse and worse and worse. And I think the breaking point was my bloating and my swelling, I could feel the fluid like in my ankles when I was driving my car. And I was familiar with that feeling because I had a lot of swelling when I was pregnant. Then the eating, I, I got where I was trying to lose weight and I was trying to eat right, except on the weekends. A lot of times I would just get so frustrated that eating was the one thing I could look forward to. So it's, it is a cycle. But for the most part, I was trying to not eat breakfast and then eat a salad for lunch. So every day I would go get that salad for lunch and barely be able to make it home. Then I would get rid of all the salad immediately and then my stomach would still be so swollen. And I'm like, okay, if I'm getting rid of everything I eat, how in the heck is my stomach swollen? Well, when you learn more about IBS and about leaky gut and just gut issues in general, your body sends fluid to your intestines and your stomach and everything to kind of help with that irritation along with air, fluid and air, and that's what makes your stomach just swell up and makes it just hard as a rock. As time goes on, I start getting a little concerned that something else is wrong with me because I'm eating salads, I'm doing this, I'm doing that. So I start going to the doctor. You know, you start off with your internal medicine doctor and my OBGYN. I had those two doctors. So I think I went to my internal medicine doctor first. He said I was not, he did not think I was going through menopause and that he wanted to do a blood test, lab work. When it came back, it said that my estrogen levels were fine, but that I was low iron and he put me on iron and he thought that was going to pretty much solve all of my problems. Meanwhile, I'm getting shots in my hip for hip pain. Already had a scan and it just said that, you know, basically my hips had inflammation or this one hip did. So I was having trouble sleeping with that too. Then things didn't get better. All along, I'm like going out of town. I am not hardly able to function when I'm out of town because I'm so swollen. My stomach hurts so bad at night. I can barely sleep. I mean, it hurts so bad. You wish you could go to the bathroom or you wish you could throw up, but you can't do anything. And it just hurts like there is something like a cannon on fire cannonball is in your stomach. I mean, it just hurts really bad. All of this was going on and I start, you know, getting shuffled back and forth to the doctors. So then I go back to my doctor. He sends me to the OBGYN. They do the, the, the scan. It's like the ultrasound. It's like the one you have when you first get pregnant and they can't do it on top. They do it like inside. And he said, that I had a few little fibroids, nothing that should cause me any problems, that it was basically fairly common, but he took my 
blood work, my lab work, and he said I was indeed in menopause or perimenopause or however. I get all those things confused. Well, by this point, I went like eight months without a period, and then I had one. So I was pretty, I knew something was going on. And I think it was right around this time that he told me that. And I was like, finally, they admit it or they tell me, they verify. Then this is when things turned around for me. They handed me a copy of the FODMAP diet because I told them I was eating salads. I was trying to eat good. I was trying to exercise. Remember when I was walking the loop and I ended up falling and I still have the scar where I fell and just got, you know, scuffed up. And it was like, all of this was like killing me. And so he handed me a copy of the FODMAP diet. That really helped because it really made me think, okay, maybe salads aren't the best thing for me to be eating. And I'm going to kind of cut to the chase here. I started the elimination diet. One of you, one of my subscribers told me that her gastroenterologist had told her husband to just eat meat and that that would help his stomach heal for a little bit, calm it down. And then you add in one thing at a time. It's the elimination diet. That way you can really pinpoint what it is that is upsetting your stomach. So I did go to the gastroenterologist. They did a colonoscopy. They did see that I had irritation, lots of irritation inside. They saw that I had diverticulosis, but that really wasn't the problem. The problem really lied in the major irritation in my colon. So they prescribed uh, Benefiber and Align. I don't even know if I still need those, but I still take them every night. I take the little packet, daily packets, because I just feel so good. I don't want to stop anything. So they did give me those two. We did the colonoscopy, and they basically pretty much let me go. So I was pretty much on my own. And I had done keto diet before, so I knew I could do that. So my plan was to start the carnivore diet, to let my stomach rest for a little while, see how it made me feel, and then add in one thing at a time. And if you guys have been here, you remember the avocado, the green beans, the cabbage, the cucumbers without the seeds, all the things that I was trying to do. And I just was never able to find something that did not upset my stomach. My stomach is so sensitive or my gut is so sensitive right now that I am thriving on the carnivore diet. I have had blood work done three times. My levels, my iron is great. I don't have to take iron pills anymore. My cholesterol is great. I will link some videos up here about my cholesterol. Now, one thing I wanted to mention is I started this diet in May. I was having great results. Week one, I think I lost, I think I lost nine pounds, but that was water weight. After one week, I felt so much better. It was unbelievable. I remember calling my mom and just telling her, I'm going to be okay. I finally felt like mentally I was going to be okay. It was like this cloud had been lifted off of me and I just felt good and hopeful and happy again. Almost, I still looked like I was bloated a little bit, but I didn't feel bloated. Like losing that water weight really helped then the weight loss does slow down because you're burning fat. You're in ketosis. So you can't expect to lose more than about two pounds a week. So that happened for a couple of weeks. And then, see, I started out at 152, and I'm 5'6". And by July, I believe it was like July 16th, I had gotten down to 130-something. I think 132 or 133. I think that was it. I'm going from memory here. And my doctor put me on HRT. Now I am on, I just asked him about that last time I was there. I asked him when he thought I should get off of that. And he said, typically what they do is put you on the HRT when you're going through these major symptoms and you just stay on it for a little while. I have osteopenia 
And then I have um, night sweats and I was having major hot flashes, major hot flashes. I was shopping one day with Sheila Fajal and I'm not kidding. She looked at me and she was like, are you having a hot flash? Pouring sweat. I can't, I think we were in Miami. So anyway, they put me on HRT. I don't know a lot about it, you guys. I really, to be honest with you, I hate to talk about it because I feel like that is something that your doctor should help you decide. I did watch a video last night. I just happened to come across it. It was two doctors talking and he really explained the whole breast cancer study. So I'm going to link that video down below, but I really think it is an individual decision. And I think it's an individual between you and your doctor decision on which one you go on. I am on just the little pill estradiol. I did do a video on this that I will link up here. Um, my doctor said I am on the lowest dose that I am on the dose that they usually use to wean people off. And then you're on progesterone because you don't want the inside of your uterus to thicken and plan for a baby. So that keeps that from happening. That is not what made me feel better mentally. I'm not saying that it doesn't help. I really don't know because I started that months after I started this diet. But I did want to go ahead and tell you guys about that. So it was from May to July. So that was not why I lost weight. And kind of preparing for this video or the next time I talked about HRT, I asked my doctor last time I was in there, did HRT help women lose weight, lose the bloating, their blood pressure be good, their cholesterol be good? And he laughed. He said, if that was the case, we'd put everybody on HRT. If you think about it, our bodies, that's the whole reason our bodies work. That's the whole reason we have all this, all these systems and these chemical reactions and these hormones. It's all about digesting our food. So why wouldn't you think how important the actual food is that you put in your body? And if you don't think about it like just eating meat, think about it like not eating this, this, and this. It will give you a different perspective. Even if you think about your plate just think about your plate. I always ate steak. I always ate chicken and meat. Just think about it like just eating that and not eating the rest. I mean, it's it's a lot of it is in your mind too if you feel like that it's gross or that it can't be done because I remember thinking that. I don't know if I can do that. I don't know if I can just eat meat. Those of you that are hung up on calories, I, I can't remember. I think it was Dr. Fung, the intermittent fasting doctor that said for those that think a calorie is a calorie and they're all equal, well, a calorie is a calorie. But if you think of, think of those little 100 calorie um, snack packs. They might have like five cookies or five little cracker, crackers or something in them. Then think about 100 calories of eggs or like a, a boiled egg or scrambled eggs, however much equals 100 calories. Think about the difference they make in your body after you eat these. If you eat those crackers or cookies, not only are they not going to fill you up, they will make you feel hungrier and they will signal to your body to release insulin to store the fat. If you eat 100 calories of meat or eggs, not only does it not stimulate the insulin, it fills you up and you're burning your your body fat as fuel other than instead of producing insulin. I don't know if I said that right, but I think you'll probably get my point. So that is what the genius, most miraculous part of this diet is. It's good, savory food that doesn't spike your blood sugar. It just, your body is so happy with it and you're never hungry. You eat until you are comfortably full and you do not think about it again until it's time to eat another meal. And as far as like intermittent fasting goes, you don't even have to concentrate on that because it happens naturally. If you eat until you're comfortably full and you're eating the right kind of calories, by the time you get hungry again, it's usually time for your next meal. So I usually eat a lunch and a dinner and that's it i don't think about it again i don't snack if i do get really hungry maybe i'll pull out one of those like john likes to get like the mozzarella cheese and hard salami roll-ups and stuff like that maybe i'll eat something like that 
but typically I will just wait until the next meal and I might even have to have that meal a little bit early but I don't snack like I used to. Used to, I had something out on the counter the whole time, like even if it was fruit or cucumbers or something like that. So it's a wonderful feeling to have a restful gut, to feel good mentally. All in all, I feel like I have helped my menopause symptoms. I've helped with the joint pain because I don't have the inflammation. And a bonus, I lost weight. So that is a great bonus. You will get to a point, like I've been at the same weight now for probably a year and a half. Your body will get to a weight and it will just stay there. So that pretty much levels out if you're wondering about that. That's one of the great things because then you can buy clothes and you can really realize you're going to be able to wear them next year because you know you're not going to be fluctuating up and down. You know what works. You know what makes you feel good. And it is just a beautiful, beautiful thing. So I hope that answers some of your questions. I hope that maybe it motivates you a little bit. I know IBS is a pretty big thing, and I know that it's mostly in women. That's what really, that's why I kept on harping on the menopause thing with my doctors, because it felt like it was hormonal. It really did. It reminded me of how I felt when I was pregnant, it just felt like a hormonal issue and food also has effects on your hormones and then it had its effects on your gut which has effects on the way you think it's just your body is amazing so i hope that helps i hope that i have maybe inspired you to give it a try and i appreciate you watching and i will see you next time Bye bye